Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video from Fanboys Forever. And here we have what I'd like to refer to as Volume 2 of our top, this time 30, Masters of the Universe Origins figures. And today we're going to be looking at all of the recent uh, releases, as well as all the old figures. Now, there's a few things we need to go ahead and get out of the way first. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Both of those things really help us out. Also be aware, this list is completely subjective. It's not meant to be a reflection of the overall opinion of the fan base or what I've seen online. It's completely my own opinion, so be aware of that, that since there are only 30 slots, that means that even figures that come in at the lower slots aren't necessarily what I'd consider to be bad figures. It just so happens that I like them a little less than the ones that are near the top, and some of these I've definitely had to split some hairs on. Also, you may notice that some of the rankings from last time and some of the opinions that I had from the last video have indeed changed. And this is just for full disclosure and honesty, as I believe that our opinions about figures, especially as our collections grow, can sometimes change fairly significantly as we go. Also, last time I made one of these lists, I failed to mention that at that time I had not secured Clamp Champ, so many people in the comments were asking where he was. This time I won't make the same mistake and let you know that I have not gotten Buzzsaw Hordak yet, which is one of the deluxe figures. It looks really cool, but I really do think it would be rather disingenuous of me to try to place the figure on this list just based on pictures, as I think that nothing really compares to actually having the figure in hand. So with all of that out of the way, let's go from the bottom to the top for the top 30 Masters of the Universe Origins action figures. So even though a huge amount of the figures on this list have changed dramatically since last time, one has not, and that is the bottom figure on the list, and that is Prince Adam. I hate to once again throw the good prince here onto the bottom of the list, and it's nothing personal but it's just a little less exciting than many of the other figures in this range. That on top of them using the older He-Man head sculpt, and it just seems like an odd choice to have been packed in with the Sky Sled. However, there is one really positive thing I can say about this figure. You can acquire this figure and the Sky Sled right now on Amazon and Target at the time of this recording, who knows what it'll be in the future, for like 12 or $13. And it's free shipping at Amazon, so... It's definitely one of the cheaper figures to acquire, but it's just not as exciting as many of the other releases. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with it. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Still an okay figure and definitely one that fans will want to have in their collection, but that's number 30. I mean, it's fine if that's who you are. Absolutely. Number 29 on our list represents the first pretty dramatic departure from the previous version. That's because number 29 is indeed the original release of Evil Lynn. And you may be thinking, come on fanboys, why all of a sudden the hate for the original Evil Lynn release? Well, it's not necessarily hatred for the figure or anything, but indeed there was a more recent version of Evil Lynn that came out in the interim since the last list. And it has really shed light on some of the things I didn't necessarily like or connect with as much about this version. And I don't know if it was the choice of the yellow plastic or the application of some of the paint on the face or maybe the way that the mouth is sculpted. I'm not really sure, but something really didn't come together for me just in a visual sense for this figure. It's still A-OK, -okay, but I'm definitely uh, going to be replacing it with the newer Evil Lynn and we'll talk about her a little bit later on the list. So at 29, it's Evil Lynn. And at number 28, we have Merman, once again following the trend, just like Evil Lynn before him, of figures that have been usurped by a newer version. With this original version of Merman, there were several problems that I just had a hard time dealing with, and this was true of my original list. Uh, for one thing, we have the kind of not quite orange enough face mask, kind of the lighter color on the vest that makes it seem a little less varied than I would have liked. Combine that with just the kind of nondescript uh, face sculpt. And uh, the original look for Merman is fine, but it's something that I never quite connected with as much as I did the cartoon look for Merman. So for that reason, he kind of goes lower on the list. Still love the sword though. At number 27, we will be looking at Zodak. Now, I received a lot of flack for his low placement on the last list, but it's more about me just being honest that it was a design that never worked for me as well as many others did within the original line. Um, I still think it's pretty good, and I have warmed up to him a little bit since this last list, thus his slightly higher placement overcoming some of the other choices that used to be a little higher than him. 
So I still think he kind of lacks a neck a little bit. He's all right though. And I think visually he does what he needs to do. He just isn't necessarily one of my favorite figures. And at number 26, I really do like this figure and I think it's a lot of fun and it does a good job at being what it's supposed to be. As a matter of fact, I'm not really sure what else they could have done. He certainly might have needed some more accessories, wands, energy effects, something. But I do like his sparkly purple base, and I think that's really cool. But it seems like the more I expand my collection, the more that Orko is sort of an outlier and more of a cool display piece, but doesn't really have a whole lot to do. But that's fine. I think he serves his purpose, but it seems that Orko is a little less appealing to me. At number 25, it's another figure that has slipped kind of lower on my radar, and that is the Princess of Power, Shira. Now, when I first did this list, Shira had just come out, and I was impressed with several things that I really liked about this particular incarnation of the character. However, as time has gone on, it seems as though the initial things that I was concerned about on that list when I placed her in the mid-tier has kind of amplified for me over time. It seems that the longer I have her in the collection, the more noticeable it is that she really just stylistically does not go with many of the other figures in the line. That includes uh, other females in the line, and especially the male figures in the line. It just seems like she isn't quite gelling with the rest. Everything from sticker placement, to soft goods, to just even the look of the head sculpt itself, none of it quite meshes with the rest of the line. Although I still really do like the figure, and believe that it really has quite a few redeeming qualities, it's still, I think, one of the lesser figures because it can't quite convince me that it's even supposed to be in this line. At number 24, we have one of the most recent figures in the line. And some people may be a little surprised at this, but it is from the Target exclusive Rise of Evil pack, Cronus. Now, I think that this is an okay figure. I really do. And I don't really have that many criticisms of it. I mean, it does the job. It, definitely plays the part of Cronus before Trapjaw, you know, became Trapjaw. But there are some things that just make him a little less exciting than many of the other figures on this list. For one thing, it's kind of inescapable that he sort of just looks like a big blue football player with a pink helmet. I mean, without him being Trapjaw, it takes away many of the things that make him stylistically and aesthetically cool. Also, I think the head sculpt itself, although it really does look like one of the original 80s head sculpts, I think that there's something kind of uninspired about it. He kind of just looks like he's incredibly angry and there isn't an incredible amount of personality to the sculpt itself. For that reason, Cronus just is a little more boring than many of the other characters in the line, even though he does exactly what he's supposed to do. At number 23, I've decided to level up one of the figures that I originally had lower on my first list, and that is Stratos. You know, originally when I did my first list, I was sort of critical of Stratos' head sculpt and saying that it was a little too retro-y for my taste and that some of the visuals weren't coming together for me. But honestly, I don't really know what I was thinking at that time. Uh, sometimes you just look back on things and you're like, you know, I was having an off day or something. Uh, I'm not really sure what else could have been done to have made him any more Stratos-y because he is definitely Stratos through and through. I think the design really does look good I think that visually it's just right on cue. I think it has that retro flair and I think it just looks great. I think at the time that I was putting my head too much in the 2000X kind of Stratos uh, redesign and not really focusing on what made that vintage figure so much fun. And I think this has it in spades. So I was happy to move him up the list a little bit. However, he still probably isn't quite as exciting as some of the other figures that I'm going to be discussing. For the number 22 slot, it's one of the newer releases. It is the version two Evil Len. Now, this figure is interesting because on the front of the packaging, they actually have a 2000X Masters of the Universe sticker telling us that indeed that is the intention here that this new color scheme is supposed to mimic her appearance in the 2000X cartoon series. And I think it does a whole lot more than that. I actually think this works as quite a redemption of that original Evil Len figure. The face paint is applied, it feels much more subtly, and the skin tone itself is, I think, much more pleasing with this particular sculpt. That, combined with the new color choices for the tunic and the boots and the crown, 
and she overall just starts to look much, much better than the original counterpart as a side-by-side. -side. Here she is with the original, and what ends up looking kind of um, jarring and extreme here with the head sculpt looks a lot more subtle right here. So I do think that this was a case of them vastly improving what they had done before. However, some awkward things about the sculpting, particularly around the hips and the thigh area, still remains from the female buck, and uh, the accessory could have been more exciting. I wish that they would have maybe included something specific from the 2000X series to go with her, so for that reason, she didn't make it any higher on the list. At number 21 is Many Faces. It is a really cool figure. It is uh, visually, it's a very pleasing figure. It has lots of great uh, paint and I love the shade of orange that they went with. I think the action feature works super well and there's just lots to love about the figure. However, I do think that the head still is a little soft and I think he ends up looking far more animated than many of the other figures, making him stylistically maybe a little less of a match than he should have been. At number 20, we have Beast Man. Now, some of my enthusiasm for this original style of Beast Man has probably been slightly diminished by the brand new Lords of Power re-release that we have coming out very soon at the recording time of this video, because I think it looks so great and it definitely has some more modern sculpting. However, this is still a very serviceable Beast Man, so I felt that he at least belonged heading up the top 20 at the very least. He looks good, I think that overall everything is where it should be, but it doesn't really go the extra mile to differentiate itself from that original vintage figure. However, if you are looking for a fairly faithful representation of that original figure with the added articulation and detail that the modern line brings us, this is one of the best examples of Mattel doing that straight up update. At number 19, we have Battle Armor Skeletor. And here he is. Um, I really do like lots of things that they did with this. Uh, he has several different accessories, including the original Skeletor head that he is not pictured with here, but he does come with a cool shield. I love how well the action feature works, works far better than the original ever did. I think the sculpting is really quite nice too with the armor and everything. And I do like the angry head sculpt and it's growing on me the more I have it. I still wish that some of the paint had been handled better with the teeth. But other than that, I really do think it is a nice figure and I think it's an exciting one. At number 18, we actually have Battle Armor He-Man as well. He and Skeletor are very much in the same class, I think, both with the fun action feature and very, very good sculpting and design work. However, He-Man has a couple of things that trump Skeletor. So they both have very funny kind of expressive head sculpts. But like I said in the last video, I am a big defender of this head because you have to imagine that He-Man is in more of that Conan style berserker rage where it looks like he's about to break bad. However, uh, I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea. It also included the original He-Man head sculpt that I have back there on my first He-Man. So that really helps it out. And it does also include a very nice effects piece that is currently on the Sword of Power. So I really do like this, and I think that he's a fine, fine addition to the collection. And I also look forward to the new Target exclusive, if anybody can find it, of him on Battle Cat because he will have what appears to be a vac metalized version of the battle armor. Another deluxe figure for number 17, that will be Ram Man. Ram Man is a very nice figure and does a great job of capturing the spirit of not only the original toy, but also the cartoon as well. Uh, the articulation is very serviceable. Uh, however, he does not have articulation at the legs in the traditional way that the others have. There's no T-crotch or anything like that. They did give him knee joints, which is very much appreciated, and swivel as well. So they really did go above and beyond to try to make him at least a little more functional than that original vintage figure. The sculpting has been updated, and I think that he is just the perfect size and looks absolutely terrific. So to me, he was the more exciting of that original wave of three deluxe figures. And of course, we'd be remiss not to mention the action feature. It works perfectly. At number 16, we have a newcomer to the list, and that will be the Sorceress. So this is the Temple of Darkness style of Sorceress and this is the one from the mini comics. Of course, this is the figure that is included with Castle Grayskull, and I think she looks really, really nice. But I think that overall she has a great, great presence, and the head sculpt is especially very nice. 
Uh, she does feature some reuse with the hips and the legs from some of the other female figures, but I love the staff accessory, and I especially like that the wings are posable. So you get plenty of options there. I love to have them out like that. You also get the great illusion of her just looking like Zor if you turn her this way. It's almost like kind of a cheat transformation. But I think she's a terrific figure, and it was a great idea to pack her in with Castle Grayskull. However, I do feel the one weakness is she should have included Zor. I think that would have been really nice. All right, it's now time for the upper half of the list. There's going to be a lot of cool figures in here and some of my very favorites of the line. But other than that, I do think that she is a terrific new addition to the line. And at the very halfway point, we have her daughter, Tila. I just love Tila as a premier kind of female figure from the line because there's so many things that she gets right. She is a great homage to the original figure and the faces are very, very in sync with one another. Also, I feel that she comes with a terrific amount of accessories since all of this can be removed and you can have her be a much more traditional looking like cartoon style of Tila. I also think that her sculpting is very sharp and she has a great presence on the shelf. So all of those things are combined to make Tila, in my opinion, the most effective of the female figures in the line. Great work, Mattel. And at number 14, we have Fisto. And I feel that he is a terrific new addition to the line. As you can see, Fisto does so much to mimic the original sculpting of his vintage counterpart, particularly with the really nice head sculpt. This is a great match for that original while updating the hair color to be a little more in line with the Filmation cartoon. Also, I really do enjoy the giant silver fist and I feel that it is appropriately sized. Also, Fisto's chest armor is absolutely terrific and I think it looks great, especially with the silver paint application and purple that goes all the way around. I'm an especially big fan of Fisto's large sword, which is just the Triclops sword, of course, uh, cast in purple. I think that Fisto works very well, and I was very, very pleased with this release. Terrific figure. Right below Fisto at the number 13 slot is a character that shares some of the same sculpting on the vest, and that is Clamp Champ. Clamp Champ is a deluxe style figure, so he comes with more than your typical Masters Origins figure. And he was one that indeed I missed on the first list because he hadn't come out in my area yet and I hadn't got him from Big Bad. However, now that he's in, I will say that I absolutely love what Mattel did with him. So not only is he just visually a very pleasing figure to look at, I really love how the blue and the red all go together, but he has some terrific accessories. For one, he has this awesome smiling head that I plan on keeping on there. And he also comes with this more serious head, which I like a lot. As a matter of fact, this head reminds me of a cross between Phil Morris and the guy who played Captain Panaka in Star Wars Episode One. So I actually think that's a really cool look. And he also comes with his clamp right here. And the action feature works very well. Simply put these back and then you can release the mechanism. There's a couple of things though that I am critical of that keeps him from being higher on the list because he definitely would have been if not for these. For one thing, he sometimes has a hard time holding this. And for another, these clamps are not very tight. So it's very difficult to take a figure and actually suspend it using this clamp. But other than that, I do think it's a nice figure and I feel that it is very worthy of that deluxe price point. So great job. Originally, I made the statement with He-Man and Skeletor that Mattel really ought to look into repacking them with these original heads that came with their battle armor counterparts. Well, indeed, we have seen that they are doing that very thing in future repacks and waves. So with that in mind, I will now be reviewing them in that state and not their original release with the kind of stranger heads. For number 12, then, that means that I am going with original Skeletor. Now, keep in mind, when I originally bought this, he had the rather strange scared head sculpt. Well, we're going to pretend that didn't happen because apparently... Mattel's pretending it didn't happen, and they're releasing him like this now. And with that in mind, this is a very, very strong representation of retro classic Skeletor. Not only does the head sculpt look terrific now, but also everything about the color choices, the accessories, and the sculpting all work together to give us the Skeletor figure that fans absolutely deserve. 
So I definitely feel that Mattel did the right thing by repacking these with the original heads. And I'm very, very pleased now that we have more definitive versions of both Skeletor and He-Man. Speaking of He-Man, at number 11, we do indeed have Revision He-Man. Now, once again, just like with Skeletor, this is not the way I originally bought him. Originally, he did come with that more questionable head sculpt, just like Prince Adam has. However, now that they have rectified that situation with the re-release and with the battle armor head, then I feel that I can much more wholeheartedly suggest this version of He-Man. I feel that with the original head, he is a terrific representation of that original toy, while also fixing some things about the colorization of that figure and making him pop a little bit more with a deeper red and a more yellowy trim around the boots. Now I feel better than ever about having He-Man being more of the center of my master's display using this original head. I think it looks terrific. And that leads us to our top 10. At number 10, I'm going to be adding a recent figure to the list, Faker. Now, I have to say, I think that this figure is far more striking than I ever thought possible for this particular character. I've always been a fan of Faker, but I feel that this one really does the character justice. It is all the strengths of the He-Man figure and all the strengths of the Skeletor figure, but combined. In other words, you have the very striking and awesome color choices that they have here, similar to that Skeletor figure, but with the incredible sculpting of the original He-Man. I love how the orange turned out and especially the red color that they used on the hair, I feel was a particularly good choice. And they even went so far as to make sure that they have a tampographic detail on the chest that shows the robotic parts of Faker. So I think this is a terrific detail. And with them going that extra mile and including a solid, not half, orange power sword, I just feel like this one stands out on the shelf and he looks wonderful, so great job. At number nine, we have a very surprising reintroduction onto this list. After I flubbed up a little bit on him the first time around, it is Roboto. So originally when I did my list, I said that the neck couldn't turn. Well, thanks to people in the comments, now I know better. The neck can indeed turn. It might not be uh, as loose a turn as the other ones have, but it really does get the job done. And I should have been a little more careful about that on my list, but certainly that is not the only reason that he's on this list. I absolutely love the action feature. Check it out. If you twist his waist, you have the gears turning and it works so well. The mouth opens. I just think it's really cool to look at with this transparent plastic. And even on the back, it's interesting to look at that along with the vibrant colors, the modular hand attachments, the silver. There's so much to love here. And this is one of those rare situations where not only did they get a character right, but I do feel that it was pretty much a vast improvement from that original figure. So great job on this one. At number eight, it is one of my favorite classic updates, Man at Arms. Duncan is looking terrific in his updated form. And it was one of those cases where not only did they do a wonderful job updating the sculpting and the paintwork of the original figure, but in my opinion, they actually improved it by adding the mustache to the head sculpt and adding some extra techie details to the armor. So I feel that with the bright primary colors really makes this a true fantastic presence on the shelf. And he's about to get reinforcements. We're going to get Eternium Palace Guards, and we're also going to get a Man-at-Arms head that looks more like the traditional figure. So it's a win-win for fans of this character. I just feel that it turned out very nicely, and I think that no shelf is complete without a Man-at-Arms, and I think it looked great. At number seven, we have everybody's favorite bad guy, you know, except for Skeletor, Hordak. This figure is incredible. Uh, it keeps growing on me the longer I own it, and I just think it looks great. Uh, it has a lot of versatility with the accessories, which is one thing I wanna get into. You can actually take this and tab it back or let it loose, either one. You're also able to, and then you also get some uh, freedom with how you utilize this with the bow. So there's just lots of cool things going on with the figure accessory wise. I think visually he works as a terrific update to that original Hordak and I love the sculpted details combined with the very bright primary colors of paint. Hordak is, and always will be in my opinion, 
one of the very coolest villains in toy or media history for that matter. So I feel that this figure does a wonderful job. At number six, we're going to go with Trapjaw. Now, the last time that I did one of these lists, I did not realize that Trapjaw actually has a fairly significant variant out there. Apparently, there is a more updated version where there is actually a hinge here at the arm to allow the arm to go in and out. Mine doesn't have that, and that's okay, but I'm just going to take into consideration that there is a version out there that can do that. And if you're able to get that, which it's the updated version, you should be able to if they repack it, then you can add that as another feather in the cap of this incredible figure. Unlike Cronus, uh, this figure has the exciting visual cues of trap jaw going for it. You have a flexible jaw, of course. I really love the kind of dead eyes with the two little dots. I love the sculpting on the machine gun arm and the modularity, of course. We do have articulation there at the elbow that it didn't have to have, but I appreciate that it did. And just the color scheme in general, I think works to make this a really imposing and terrific looking figure, one of the very best. And getting into the top five, we're gonna go with Ninjor. I'm not sure how this Ninjor figure has worked its way into my heart as much as it has, but there's just something about this that Mattel got absolutely 100% correct. Maybe it's the updated sculpting where you can actually see the, all the little texture on the tunic. Maybe it's the awesome head sculpt. Maybe it's this hilariously great retro uh, 80s decal on the tunic. Maybe it's all of the cool accessories that he comes with. Add an 80s ninja sword. He instantly becomes one of the most imposing and interesting figures in the entire line. At number four, we have the incredible Triclops figure from Mattel. This one is an awesome update. It's everything you could ever hope for in an update and truly an improvement in so many ways. Not only do we have an awesome action feature where you're able to turn the visor and have all the different eyes of Triclops, but the sculpting is just out of this world with really sharp lines, terrific individual teeth sculpting even, an awesome sword, and those colors, man, they just can't be beat. No shelf is complete for a Masters Universe display without this incredible Triclops figure. Down to our top three, we actually have number three, Scareglow. Now, Scareglow, uh, not to discredit him or anything, was originally the number one pick on my last list and I still stand by all of the compliments that I gave this figure. It looks awesome, it glows in the dark, it has a cape that looks like it's soft goods, but it's actually hard plastic. I mean, this guy is just incredible looking. He's the perfect update to the original vintage figure, and who doesn't love Scareglow? So I have to say, he's still just as impressive as he was, but a few things have changed since the last list. At my number two spot, it's the brand new version two merman. Now, this merman sculpting has been around for a little while because he was originally, the sculpt that is, in the Lords of Power box set. And that was a power con thing, very expensive, hard to get a hold of, but it was really cool looking. However, they've updated the paint job a little bit and re-released him in the main line. And if you don't like that because you wish it would have stayed exclusive to that box set, you're a miserable person. <laughs> However, I just have to say that I love that this has been made available to the general public and there's so many cool sculpted flourishes going on here that make this one of the most impressive Masters figures that Mattel's ever done. But he does a great job of living up to the even the Masters of the Universe Classics figure. He looks wonderful. Also, even the boots have been updated and there's all these cool little sculpted tassels. The sword even looks neater than the original release because they've sculpted it in more of a pearlescent yellow. I love the variants in yellow going through the vest and the face mask, and he just looks great from every angle. I have to say I'm very impressed with this one, and I think it is one of the best figures that they've ever done. And that leaves the champion, yes, Keldor. And I know some folks may be thinking, really you're going to put the Target exclusive as the number one figure? Well guys, as of the recording of this video, this exclusive has been in stock on Target.com, available at retail cost for about four days now. So I think that initial limited run where hardly anybody could get a hold of it, I think that's coming to an end. And at the time of recording, this figure is widely available if you just use the website. So I definitely think that this deserves the number one slot. So this figure is everything that you like about the original Skeletor release, only enhanced in every way possible. 
For one thing, we have this awesome new Keldor head sculpt. And if you don't know, this was Skeletor before he got his face eaten off with acid. And it looks really awesome. Now, this looks very similar to the Masters of the Universe Classics version, but there's nothing wrong with that because that is a brilliant looking head sculpt. We also have some cool green paint on the bat and it's great to see it painted along with that pink gem. And I just love seeing things like the variants between all the different colors. I love seeing the deeper purple, looks great. I also feel like this is the coolest Havoc staff that Skeletor has had because of this incredible effect as it fades upwards. But that's not all with this figure. One of the main reasons why this gets the top spot is because it is actually a two-in-one. It comes with this incredible Alfredo Alcala style Skeletor head sculpt. And he is an artist that did some of those original mini comics. Once you do that, you pop that head on and you give him the sword, which is also a super cool accessory as it fades, like it's phasing through. He has a little bit of a hard time holding this sword, but I really do think it looks great. And you've got a Skeletor that looks absolutely awesome. The Skeletor goes way beyond the cool factor of the original and gets into all sorts of great fan-pleasing territory. It was so great to get this incredibly plussed up and really awesome looking new version of Skeletor with not only the ability to make him into this form, but also have him be in that original Keldor form that I couldn't help but make him the number one figure on this list. And if you haven't yet, do yourself a favor and go ahead and order the Rise of Evil set. Sure, you may have to buy a Cronus to get this, but I can assure you it is worth it all. All right, friends, I would like to thank you for tuning into my second volume of the list. This was the summer 2021 edition of the list. As new waves are released, I may very well update these videos, and I want to thank everyone for the awesome reception that my original list had. I thank everybody for the comments and your input, and just like in that last video, I'm asking you that if you have any opinions that are different than mine or the same, doesn't matter, then go ahead and put them in the comments below. I definitely want to hear your take on this list. Am I way off? Am I right on? Tell me how you would do it, and I would love to hear it. Also, once again, if you want to comment with a link to your own video that's in the same style, I will add it to my description so that we can have a community of Masters of the Universe Origins lists. Guys, if you've enjoyed this video at all, please be sure to like and subscribe. Both of those things really help us out, and it means the world to us here at Fanboys Forever. As always, this is Jared signing out. God bless you and yours, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out. It has a cape that looks like it's soft goods, but it's...